What is going on everyone? Today we are gonna talk about how the bank gave me a loan to buy a $5 million building. I don't know what they were thinking, or maybe it's just, I don't know what I was thinking, but either way, we're gonna walk through the steps that we got there and maybe provide some insight. So if you have maybe an assisted living facility or a business of some sort, and you're trying to figure out how can I use this asset and purchase maybe an adult daycare or get into the adult daycare business with this asset. So anyways, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, because I heard I don't know, the lovely banks out there, they show favoritism to everyone that likes our videos. <laughs> so anyways, guys, for those that may not know, we recently bought a, a building in Sarasota, which is actually gonna be our adult daycare center. It's gonna be our headquarters and support center for all of our franchisees. And we will have four tenants that occupy the space. So it's a larger building, 16,000 square feet, sits on about two acres in the heart of Sarasota. But how do we do this? Because trust me, I couldn't have just done this. Like I didn't just have money sitting around. It was like, oh, let me just go buy that building. It was a very kind of thoughtful process and I wanted to walk you through it because if you're in a similar position or you know, maybe this is a possibility for you to you know, get into the adult daycare space and you're trying to figure out how to do it, this could be a way to do it. Because again, we didn't have the cash laying around, but how do we get there? So that being said, we actually listed our assisted living facility for sale for 1.5 million. We originally agreed on a $1.4 million valuation later into the negotiation process. And if you've ever sold a piece of property, you know there might be a time prior to like the D-Day, which is basically when the deposit goes hard, that it gives the buyer an opportunity to renegotiate based on some of the things that they found with the inspection. So of course, you know, we kind of had uh, you know thought that that might happen at some point, but uh, anyways, we did a price reduction of $100,000, so we settled on a $1.3 million purchase. And what happened was, is during that closing, the 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 way the assets got split up is they got split up in two ways: one for what the purchase of the property was, and one for what the purchase of the business was. So in this case, the way it was valued was around $1.1 million for the property, about maybe $200,000 for the business. And the way they calculate this is they they calculate it, you know, really it's more so uh, however the borrower's bank, you know, the, so the person that's a buyer and the borrower, how they want to quantify the loan. Because if they raise the value of the real estate, then it allows them to collateralize that real estate, which makes it easier to qualify for the loan depending on how much money you put down. So a lot of times the reasoning for like how much the business is worth versus how much the property is worth has a lot more to do with the buyer and the borrower's bank and less about how you want it done, okay? You're, at the end of the day, are just trying to sell it, okay? And, you know, maybe exit it to go into another piece of real estate or another business, okay? That being said, once we got done paying the loan and the closing costs, we ended up with about $500,000 left from the property and about $2,000 left in goodwill from the business. So a total of $700,000. Now what we did is we took that money and we put it into a 1031 exchange. And the reason for that is the 1031 exchange allowed us not to have to pay capital gains tax. And it was actually on a different amount that we'd be being paying paying tax on, which is actually more, because <laughs> it has a lot more to do with what you purchased the property for and what you sold it for. But the reality of it is, is in order for us to like basically avoid and defer our capital gains tax payment, we put it into a 1031 exchange. So literally at closing, I got zero dollars, <laughs> okay? It all went from here to this attorney that we had hired to be our qualified intermediary, okay? And so while it's sitting in this account, I'm just praying that the attorney doesn't run off with it, okay? <laughs> but he didn't, he didn't. He was a nice guy. He, he, I'll, I'll give you his name if you'd like. Anyways, so at this point in time, we had then identified a property that we wanted to buy in Sarasota. And it was listed for like, I think 3.5, and we negotiated down, down to 2.8 is where we entered the contract with them, okay? So what this meant is now we had to put a kind of a, a, a refundable deposit just in good faith that, hey, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this deposit down and you know we're gonna give us time to go get our inspections lined up and things like that. And so this non-refundable deposit, we put down 50 grand, it came out of 
the 1031 exchange escrow account. So we just called up the attorney. They sent the money over to the other attorney that was like basically handling the closing of this transaction. And uh, we went through our due diligence process where we like had all of the inspections come out and did everything we needed to do for understanding or inspecting the air conditioners and you know just the building itself and the infrastructure and the structure and the foundation and all that kind of stuff. We did that. And then what we were waiting on next towards the end was our financing contingency. So we had our due diligence, which is typically like somewhere between 15 to 30 days. And then we had our financing contingency. And in this case, we had originally asked for a, um, a 60 day financing contingency because we you know, weren't sure how long it would take for us to get like approval for this SBA loan. So we asked for a 60 day financing contingency. We actually extended it to 90. We were able to get it, but the reality was once that financing contingency passed, the day passed, if we still wanted the property, then that money was gonna go hard and we would have to then at that point actually put in another 100 grand. And it was like, okay, this is real. Our non-refundable to the tune of 150 grand. Like, are we sure we want it? Even if the bank says no, can we still get it? Uh, and, if, and if the bank would have said no, and then we would have lost the deal, we would have lost that money. Now, we were able to make it work where we finally got the approval letter we needed by the bank. And so when the money went hard, we had an approval letter saying that like, here's the terms of the loan. You know, we're willing to finance this borrower and continue with the rest of the process. And then we had about another 30, the 45 days of kind of like, you know, just closing settlement paperwork that we had to come up with. That being said, we basically took the entire amount that was sitting in the escrow account of the 1031 exchange, and that all went into what was a bridge loan. And the reason why we needed this bridge loan is because we couldn't qualify for the SBA loan, the one we wanted, which would include construction and it would include our furniture and our fixtures for our adult daycare business. We couldn't enter that SBA loan because of the fact that we were doing construction. The SBA loan needs construction drawings and permits, building permits to actually go through with the loan. Well, we couldn't get that stuff unless we own the building. So we had to get a bridge loan and we were gracious enough to find this amazing bank that said, hey, you know what, we'll give you the bridge loan to acquire the property and then you'll have 90 days to then get the SBA loan after you've acquired that property to finance out the bridge loan and basically pay off the bridge loan and then get the remaining dollars you needed for construction, working capital and furniture and fixtures. So long story short, we closed on that bridge loan. At this point in time, we got a loan of 2.1 million. It's got a six month payoff balloon payment on it because it's with the anticipation of getting the SBA loan, right? So it's a bridge loan. It's just bridging the gap from the time that we purchased the building to the time that we get the, the loan that we were always trying to get. Now, unfortunately you have to pay closing costs on both loans. That is an unfortunate side of it. But at the end of the day, we would have never been able to do this if it wasn't for the bank to giving us the, this bridge loan. That said, we got an interest only six month loan for 2.1 million. Now we are in the process of finalizing our SBA loan. And what this is gonna do is the SBA loan will actually pay off the bridge loan in full, and then it'll also then finance those additional things that we need for the business, like construction and working capital and furniture and fixtures. So the 2.1 million will be paid off by the SBA loan, and then we'll get an additional 1.8 million, and a lot of this will be managed, the, the, the way this money is paid out will be managed by the bank itself, but that'll go towards construction costs, that'll go towards working capital that we'll need to get the business off the ground, and that'll go towards the furniture and fixtures that we'll purchase for the adult day space. So that being said, guys, that is how we ultimately ended up going from selling our assisted living facility to being able to purchase a $5 million building, 16,000 square foot to what, almost two acres in Sarasota, was by going through this process. And I cannot stress it enough just how important it is for you to understand if you're selling property and you wanna get into another piece of property to utilize this amazing gift that Uncle Sam gave you, and it's called a 1031 exchange. <laughs> and I talked about it in another video, guys, but the reality of it is that this is an incredible gift and, and, and a lot of people that are in real estate would obviously be aware of what it is and how it works. But what it does is it allows you to trade up from one property to the next. And if you look at it, we went from a smaller property that was 6,000 square feet into a 16,000 square foot property that's in the heart of Sarasota and sits on two acres. And we could have only done that if 
you know, one, we had the 1031 exchange, and then number two, we found a bank that was willing to give us the bridge loan as well as then an SBA loan to pay off the bridge. So that being said, guys, super, super grateful for our bank and our lending partners, you know, for helping us out with this deal. I know that myself, when I've been through like all of these processes before, I wish someone could have shared this insight with me because I didn't know what I was doing. And the only way that I found out how to do it was to just go figure it out. So my hope is that with this video is just to be able to share with you guys, like how does something like this actually work? And so that way, if you're trying to do something like this in your own life, that this might help you understand what steps to take, you know, what it looks like and have a kind of a basic understanding of how you go about handling that process. So thank you so much for joining us. If you want to learn more about how to open up your own adult daycare, go to adcpro.com. Make sure you join our monthly webinars, join our private Facebook group. And if you're interested in like, you know, learning more about the active age franchise, I kind of know a guy. And let me tell you, man, this thing is mind blowing. You want to learn about this. It's activeagecare dot com forward slash franchise now i gotta get back to work we'll see you in the next one peace hey guys thank you so much for joining me if you'd like to learn how to open your own adult daycare center go to adcpro.com if you like the latest business tips click here and make sure you subscribe to our channel click here we'll see you guys next time